Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a DevOps interview question that can come in many different forms, but the answer is the same. The concepts are the same. Um, uh, first of all, let me give you some context. So the question might be something like this. You're designing a service or somebody else is designing a service. What will make this service robust? What is your opinion of what makes this service robust or complete or well integrated and whatnot? So for example, let's say that it's, take, let's take a very simple service. Let's say that your service does nothing but allows users to upload their images through a website, right? Very simple service, but wh what would make this service complete or robust, right? So this question can come in different forms. For example, it can say, what does a robust service mean to you? Or the interviewer might say, what do you require from a developer who is designing a service? Or it might say, what does a good service look look like to you? Or it might say, what does operational excellence looks like, uh, in your opinion, for a given service, right? There are many ways to ask the same question. What the interviewer is, is looking for is your idea your, that, 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 that you know that, that in any service that is uh, serviced through um, DevOps or SRE uh, should have certain characteristics about them that makes it a good service. What are those? That's the thing that he or she is going for when they're asking you this question. So let's dive into that. The first one is reliability or high availability, meaning the service should be um, there all the time, right? It shouldn't, it shouldn't go down. You should, it, should, it shouldn't get an error. Regardless of how the service is serviced in the back end, maybe multiple containers, multiple VMs, load balance, or what else doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's just at the end of the day, it should be available four nines or three nines or whatever it is, right? It should be available. That's first first and foremost. The next one is performance. So it has to be it has to be performant means it can't be too slow. If I'm waiting five seconds, six seconds for the service to respond to me, that's too slow. Maybe maybe the service requires uh, 20 millisecond response, or maybe it requires a one second response, but whatever it is based on the service, it has to be not slow. That's that's what that's what they mean by performance or performance, right? Scalability means this is behind the scene now, right? You depending on the volume of the request, your infrastructure should scale uh, up and down depending on the demand of the service. That should be autom automatic, right? So in during the day, maybe you get five thousand hits. Maybe during the night, you get two hits. So based on the need, you might serve from a, from one pod. Or maybe you serve from 10 virtual machines. Who knows, right? But it has to be scalable in that way. Uh, fourth um, item is automated testing for deployment. So meaning whenever there's a new version going out for this service, there should be automated testing available so that we don't have to rely on manual testing to see if the new version broke anything. It didn't, it didn't make it slower. It didn't make it problematic or buggy. Uh, things like that. So the automatic testing should be available. Now, these things are ideal scenarios, right? In real life, you're always missing something. But um, this, is, this, this is the ideal uh, way of looking at a service that is serviced through DevOps or SRE teams, right? So next one is automatic deployments. This is CICD. This is bread and butter of SRE teams, right? The service, when there's a new version, Nobody should have to go and do things manually to make it deployable. It should be there should be a pipeline that goes through. It goes from development to staging to production. Ideally, that pipeline should include a um, include a um, testing. Um, sometimes there's a pause between staging and production. Maybe there are there are time windows where it can be go, it can go live. Uh, but regardless, it should be uh, the deployment pipeline should be automated. Next one is observability or metrics. So one, once it is live, uh, you should have a way to look into uh, different metrics. For example, how fast is the service? How many requests are we servicing? What are the latencies between different components of the service? Maybe there's a database involved, whatnot, right? So you should be able to be able to observe different performance of the service when it's live, even when there's no outage, right? Next one is you should be able to monitor the service. For example, the difference between observability and monitoring is monitoring it has to do with alerting, meaning when there's a problem, you should know automatically there should be alert to some channel, some Slack channel or some pager duty. Somewhere it should say the service is not performing or it, it's actually down, right? That's monitoring. 
the next step or next one is going to be security so security should be built into development process or going live process whatever the process is security should be part of every single step right so at the end of the day you shouldn't have to look for security holes or you shouldn't be alerted by by being hacked so security should be built into the service and the deployment of the service the last one is not always followed but it is one of the important ones that it can really bite you um, down the road if you don't care of it for too long. This is called disaster recovery. So imagine if you're serving your service from one availability zone, your server should should be living in multiple availability zone or even ideally maybe multiple regions if that's needed, right? That way, if um, a disaster hits from, from your data center or from your provider's data center, you should be able to bring the service back up somewhere else in a different region, maybe a different cloud product provider, what have you. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a way to recover service when there's a disaster that hits your data center or uh, your cloud provider, provider's data center. So these are the um, nine or so different components that makes a service stable, robust, performant, and whatnot. So this question comes from the interviewer in the many different forms. Sometimes it's part question, you know, but as long as you know these nine things, you should be able to answer this question in a confident manner. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next DevOps SRE interview question video.